think we're ready. So, uh, first question, I guess, is, uh, like, um, how are you doing today, really, Otaku Hound? I'm actually doing very good. Um, I've been actually awake since about 10 p.m. my time, so that's still been about 10 plus, 10 plus 3, so 12, 15 hours, and I've already been streaming for about 12 and a half hours straight right now. Oh, really? So I'm doing pretty good, laughing, making a lot of people laugh. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. That's good. So, uh, I I really like making people laugh too. Uh, so where um where uh exactly did you get your name Otaku Hound from? Well, it's actually a little bit of a, kind of a funny story. If you know the game Metal Gear Solid, Solid Snake. Yeah. I actually uh, started to make different kind of names on that. On that, some other names from like Xbox and everything back then. But then later, I was thinking of a stream name. So I was like, Oh, I'm Otaku Hound. Solid Snake, Otaku Hound. Yeah. So I kind of came up with the name based kind of like on that kind of like basis. It was from Metal Gear Solid, which was my favorite game back as a kid. Oh, that makes sense. That makes sense. Oh, wow. So um, for uh, my next question kind of is um, one I kind of ask everybody is like, how exa exactly did you uh, discover VR chat? And how'd you get, uh, you know, how'd you get into it? Like, and then how also how, uh, what made you decide to start streaming it too? Ah, well, the very first thing that I got me into VR chat was I was actually, uh, my computer I built here from scratch was back then, as soon as I heard about the Oculus, the first one was announced that there was being made. Yeah. I actually built that specifically for VR. Oh, really? And then at one point, yeah, I was doing that. Then I was having some issues with like, you know, jobs on and off, but I was still buying the piece by piece and I got it built. Use it for other gaming. And then at one point I saw, I think it was Hey, I'm B or something, the big Uganda Knuckles avatar stuff, kind of funny. Yeah. And I discovered VR chat back in about June, July 2018. I think I discovered it before that, but I thought it was only VR specific. And then I found you could get in desktop mode. And then I popped in, socialized, made a lot of friends just in desktop. Oh, yeah. And then I eventually got a VR. And for the, what got me in the stream was actually a lot of people I started making friends with, they kept on saying, oh, Otaku, I think you'd be a great streamer. Yeah, really I've been hearing that a lot from people, people like, that. that's kind of how, why they start streaming, is a lot of time their friends are like, hey, you should start streaming because you're really funny, and I think you'd be a good streamer. Yeah, that's actually, I've been noticing that a lot about too, because some people have been saying and suggesting that, I've been helping them try to at least stream and set up their stuff properly so i'm actually i personally am helping people to get their stream set up and i help them fix their obs i help them fix radar settings I yeah yeah them, i hope it wasn't bugging you when i was asking you in your chat today because i was asking for a bit of advice because i'm having my own issues but i think i fixed it because my stream seems to be running a lot smoother today which is awesome also i had to no, change no, a I, setting with my vr know. um <laughs> uh, do you know the motion smooth i don't know if you have it like the motion smoothening uh setting like I had to turn that off because it just was it like was making me choppy whenever I moved. Um, I'm actually not aware about that one. Is that a Steam one or it's is probably like HTC setting? Vive or Index then issues? Maybe that uh, could be it. I haven't fully explored everything with Steam VR, but it could be Steam VR too. That could be they it. They might yeah. have that type of setting. But ever since I turned it off, it's been running a lot better. Like a lot, really. <laughs> I think it's going to be, I think that kind of would be relatable to uh, that one game setting, I forget what it's called, uh, V-Sync. It's kind of like where sometimes oh, yeah, it'll, yeah. it tries to forcibly smooth it out, which makes it more choppy, but then when it doesn't forcibly smooth it, your eyes are not really tracking every little frame, yeah, so yeah, it doesn't yeah. really affect you. That makes sense, yeah. For me, uh, also, for me, what what got me into VR chat was actually, um, well, of course, the Knuckles meme was how I first discovered it. I was like, what the heck is this? This is weird. But then I immediately, that's why I love the Knuckles meme even to this day is because how wacky and weird it was. And I just, it made me fall in love. It was like, what is this game? This is hilarious. And then I discovered in addition, the first VR chat YouTuber I ever discovered. And I immediately, he was my, he's still my favorite VR chat YouTuber, I think. Just because how kind of like his personality is so kind hearted and stuff. Like, he's one of my favorites, and not just because I found, he was the first one I found, but he's also, I don't know, he's just he's like a really awesome, kind-hearted guy and stuff, and I've met him, which, he's a really cool guy in VR chat, too, I've, and I don't get to hang out with him often, because he's busy, but he's still a really cool guy, and yeah, that's kind of how I got into it, and then VR Funny is how I discovered all these big streamers and stuff, and all these other cool content creators, some, some Foxy, but mostly VR Funny.
Oh yeah, because uh, you remember, you think you told me you're you're still pretty new to VR chat in general. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, I'm so new. I'm I literally this is probably um, uh, because here's the thing. I started VR chat in 2018 was when I first tried it, and I tried that maybe two or three days of me using a voice doll like a voice changer from Doctor Who, and I went around with this Dalek avatar because I it was all I could really do with uh, my setup because my computer wasn't that great yet. I didn't have a VR headset either. So I did that for a little while, and then um, and then from there, but I don't count those days because, like I said, I was only there for two or three days, and I, it's like I, it wasn't VR to me, and I never really met too many people. And then, um, but then that I got into VR like after I got back from my vacation in Hawaii because it got canceled early, and I was kind of just like, and I was watching VR funny. I was like, you know what? I, I really, really want to give streaming a chance again because I had dropped it for about a year. And I'd already become an affiliate. And I'm like, you know what? I want to try streaming again. And you know what? Let's start with VR check because that sounds fun. And well, I've just, I've been loving it so much because it's like day 13 or 14. I need to find the exact start date so I can tell people. But it's like, it's been so soon. I've met so many awesome people, made so many great friends, met some straight, so many cool streamers that are like, even some of the big ones who treat me really kindly and stuff, despite being, you know, kind of super small compared to them. Or even just, even if I was a streamer, just treating me like one of their friends which is kind of awesome oh uh, yeah definitely vr chat's actually a lot more friendly but think of, it's one of the things i like to tell people because the people go say oh people are so horrible and vr chat is like listen people are horrible in real life people are great in real life all it is is you're just siphoning through a bigger crowd of people quicker in vr chat you find the cool people you're gonna get a lot more of the crap people at the same time Oh, yeah. You gotta go through them and you'll find more people. Because, I mean, people in this game, as far as I was told, I'm, like, well-known because I've been here for a long time. People know I'm a great person. Yeah. I go out of my way to talk to people. But then again, you also get those people that are the bad eggs because you know how it is in some public worlds or some people just are known oh, yeah. for kind of just not being super friendly a little bit more toxic and all oh, that. I, i've had somebody i've had somebody crash me too like i was in a lobby with a couple other streamers although it had cleared out quite a bit of streamers by that point but like and somebody came in with this really weird looking avatar they just went around they pointed this laser at me like this laser that's changing rainbow colors and immediately as it pointed to me my vr chat crashed like it was really annoying and he got and apparently people are doing that frequently so well, they used to do it more frequently, but with the new update, the crasher accounts are kind of gone. But even originally, I know some people would try to do the crashing. Yeah. I know some people had a beast PC and can handle it, which is actually funny. I had people try to crash me, and I was like, there's some people that I guess were still trying to like egg me on. I was like, go ahead. And at that time, they didn't have a strong enough crasher because they were crashing me. My screen would freeze, and I'd actually unfreeze and be like, you done? <laughs> It would <laughs> yeah. be like 30 seconds, but I'd be frozen. I'm like, I'm not crashing fully. It's going to render eventually. If I come back, I'm like, what's up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can understand that. It kind of sucks. Like, and uh, like, what, 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 um, especially Happy Steward, because what he asked me when I was interviewing him, something he was most interested about was the new user experience, as he calls it, which is a good name for it, is somebody who's new to VR chat, brand new. It's like, and he's worried about, like, with all the toxicity of public worlds, like, he's worried that someone's going to have a bad experience and it's going to ruin VR chat for them. And it's just something he worries about, and he wanted to know what my experience was. And in my opinion, I got lucky because within like day two or three, I I ran into um, Don Italiano, who is one of the most well known and respected people in the VR check community that isn't a streamer, and he's an awesome guy. He's been super kind to me. And then there, uh, uh, and at the same time, I ran into McCrackle at the same time, who is also one of my favorite VR chat YouTubers and streamers. Like he's like up there like he's right next to an edition because he's so funny and he's and whenever i see him he like like he pulls me into bits and stuff kind of and it's just great and like that stuff i gotta talk to him it's like i don't know it's like the, so i so like i said i got lucky within two or three days i ran into those guys and they kind of pulled me into this giant community of vr chat streamers and just awesome people that i've been able to befriend and talk to and now interview which like, like Miss Agent Fox was the one who got me into loving this because I, I had it in the back of my head. I'm like, maybe interviewing would be fun, but then she like was like, uh, she pulled me and she's like, I want to interview you, and we had a back and forth, and like it was just, it was so much fun. It was so much fun. 
Oh yeah, she's definitely Miss Agent Fox is a great person. I just wish I it's harder for me to hang out with a bunch of people cuz I know there's always a, you know, the private worlds usually you don't always want to yep. jump on them. You try to find someone that's in a joinable world so you just jump on them. Cuz people are either sleeping, private talks, movies, all that stuff, you know. Yeah, that's why but, um somebody gave me a good piece of advice. Um uh, sorry, I'm really bad at interrupting people. I feel bad. <laughs> um no, it's completely fine. Um, one advice I was given was kind of like uh, that way you don't uh, get your hopes like let down or like kind of just to keep yourself in a good mood. If you organize your friends list and like have a group or two set to people like streamers or not, people who you know will want to hang around you or in, or either will accept your invites or will or will let or invite you to the world or just like you the people you know you can hang around in VR chat because. Then you feel more comfortable around those people, and also so you don't feel like, oh, I keep invite, I keep requesting to join this person or this streamer, and they're not letting me join. They must hate me. It's just yeah, they have either have to get to know you better, or you're just not the person they want to hang around at that time. And I don't know. That's why it's kind of good to organize their friends list. I think by people you know will want to be around you. Yeah, and I'm glad that's actually why they expanded the favorites list to three different sections, as far as I remember. Unless I'm wrong. No, no, you're right. You're right. Uh, you know, tired. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you've but, you been know. streaming for like oh, like twelve hour over twelve hours now. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit of a way, you know, with the the whole current issue going on. It's just like yeah, hey, sleeping schedule. You're out of whack, so kind of yeah. walking it in. Well, we got to be careful but because you know, I heard that I, I, if we actually say, you know, its name, we can actually get demonetized on YouTube. So we'll just refer to it, it as it <laughs> because I need to because oh, yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, that's I don't, why I currently said this, mm -hmm. the current issue, the current <laughs> issue. Yeah. And that's something I'm going to be trying to make sure I'm careful with. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it, it's it's been fun for me in VR chat. And so for you, how was your first experience in VR chat? Kind of, I'm curious about the like, the, like when you met, met people and stuff, and how your experience was. Um, let's see, I can't remember the exact first day. Actually, no way. Actually, I I actually can because actually I'm still really close friends with uh, my very first friend from VR chat. She She's actually an IRL mute. The very first day, just hanging, talking, maybe some little jokes and stuff with a bunch of people. Met a person is a full-on mute and everything. Sign like a uh, VR chat type sign language. IRL, they do sign language. Amazing friend, just hung up on people. She opened up a portal to the presentation room and pointed us to go in. So we had a group of people, and I was just learning like for like a whole few like hours, six hours, like really long time. Yeah. Very genuinely interested about the whole vr chat sign language so i was like very interested made a perfect friend there that's my number one closest friend i've been thinking about doing uh, that kind of stuff with sign language it's really it's a really useful language in both vr chat and in real life yeah the only difference though is that she has made it quite clear it's there's a, it's kind of like broken language the yeah, broken yeah. vr chat sign language versus specific finger motions you can't do in vr yeah 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 IRL. So it's like a lazier version of it, but it's still communicable for a certain extent in VR mm -hmm. chat. Yeah. It's really cool how VR chat allows us all to communicate so differently and more uniquely like that. It's like, it, it's so unique what VR chat and allows us to do. And I, I would, I'd say the same about video games, but in general, because video games have kind of changed the way the world works. But at the same time, VR chat's very unique. It's a social, it's almost like a social experiment in a way. It is so different from other games like out there. And the way you can meet people that you never would have met regardless and become best friends with. And it's like you ne that never would have happened without VRChat existing. Well, yeah. Well, you know, the, the main reason why VRChat's doing so well is because it's a free brand like sandbox game. Yeah. So everything in here was made by someone else. This is all considered a social platform. But every single road, including this one we're in, the Void Club, it's considered art. People are artistic. They got a great club out there. They explore it. Well, I mean, why wouldn't you want to explore it? There's so much creativity you can find, and it's all made by other people. It's not like a AAA game company. And you're like, oh, wow, this is amazing. People want to socialize, and they find out so much stuff they can do. People drink in VR, play games in VR, socialize, role play. I mean, I'm actually part of role plays, too. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, uh, just ignore me uh, what I was just doing. I was just trying to activate some music real quick because I just realized I didn't have anything playing and that's going to be kind of boring. <laughs> Uh, oh, that's no worries. Yeah, when you edit the video, you go and put more music in there. True, true, very true. Uh, yeah, I don't know. For me, like, I don't know. Do you do do you, you do YouTube at all? Or are you just like strictly streaming? Well, I used to do a lot more YouTube when I was actually like first beginning streaming. I was actually doing a lot of a uh, VR chat funny clip compilations, and I was actually emphasizing every stream, every YouTube video, never monetized, always funny. Yeah, that was actually the motto I put for it. It kind of died down because I had to take a break from streaming and everything because IRL issues. And then I was like, I'm going to stream. I always feel better when I stream. And all internet died for like seven to eight months. Yeah, it yeah. It was like not streamable. As soon as I got back up, I was just like, I lost my motivation, my drive. And it was like, you know, slowly now and then streaming. So I do a little fun little projects. So I'm only doing YouTube when I have a project I really want to do. Like I did a... I made a, I'm working on projects in Unity. I'm making a Purge roleplay map. I got other little projects I want to do. I made a little trailer for the Purge roleplay, which unfortunately, due to the current issue going on, yeah, we decided to put it on hold. It was supposed to happen on the day of the Purge, like I forget, like March 21st or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But everyone's having issues because the epidemic is an issue. Yeah, it's it's a scary yeah, time. Fun. It's a very scary time for the world, really. And it's it's why a lot of people like a lot of people are like saying like they're getting all kind of stressed out by the like being stuck at home or stuff like that or like it's like or, or even it's not just this but with what's happening it just kind of brings out how people feel alone when there's nobody around when it's like I feel like that's why sometimes like it, it can be bad being an extrovert in that way because a lot of people probably it really hurts to not be around people. But as an, and as an introvert, I can't really understand that because I, I like being like I like my alone time. I love being at home, but I can understand that the other people have their own things. They love going out with friends and stuff, and I can definitely see that because there are times where I like to go out with friends too. Like I'm not saying that's uh, you know not wrong or anything because I'll do the same thing. But I don't know. It's like I feel like pe like it's always good to give people advice about what they should do during times like this, where either they're mentally are going through something that's either worrying them or stressing them out. Like there's a whole bunch of stuff that uh that people can do. I think to kind of calm down. Like what's something you kind of do whenever you're kind of stressed out? Stream. Stream. Kind of relaxes you out. Yeah, because nothing. It relaxes me out. It always makes me happy because as soon as I can make myself look like an idiot, make someone laugh, chuckle, smile, I'm like, I feel great because I made your day feel better. That's literally the reason why I was stressing out so much when my internet was going down because my relief is streaming, entertaining people. Yeah, that's good. That's that's always a good thing. For, for me, like, I have a lot of stuff that kind of re relaxes me and stuff, but it's like... The kind of stuff I kind of uh, like to rely on is if I'm stressed out, I like to take time just to take a deep breath and take a step back from the stuff that's stressing me out. Like either if that's reading a book, playing a video game or doing something and just it kind of get my mind off and stop focusing on the stuff that's stressing me out. Like um, it's like uh, for me, like um, like it's it's interesting because for me, it's kind of hard to understand social cues and stuff because I, I have uh, I am high functioning autistic which is why I'm also not a big fan of people who make autism jokes all the time when they're trying to use autism in replacement of the R word. I'm not a big fan of that. <laughs> like, because that's not what autism is. It's not, it's not people just being stupid. It's a real mental issue. And not a lot of people seem to realize that or they take it really lightly. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's why I've actually been telling people too with those kind of jokes. I say, like, if they say it once as like a, like a regular phrase you hear every day, okay. They start saying it too much, I'll be like, hey, you could tone that down a little bit, bro. Yeah, like, yeah. If sling slip out, like, if, like honestly, I like, not any offense. If I say, oh, dude, I feel like such a retard as a joke. Yeah. Like, that's a regular phrase. Oh, yeah, that, that's but then totally if they fine. It's just. It goes on and on. Then I'm yeah. like, bro, as long, like, for my main thing is, hey, don't call that person that word. That's now attacking someone's character. If you're doing it as a joke for yourself or something, okay. Because it's a common phrase now. I'm not trying to say it's allowed, it's good, it's okay, da da. It's just, it's life. People will still say that kind of stuff as that's a common phrase that's being used. 
as long as you're not using it in a very negative way, okay. If you start saying it in a negative way, I will actually be like, dude, that's going a little too far. You're going to have to tone that down. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. It's like, yeah. in, it's like some jokes just kind of go just a bit, like they take it too far and that kind of sucks. And like, I don't know. And for me, it's like, it, when it comes to stuff like, you know, um, like, because a lot of that can sometimes be taking your know, anger out on somebody or like just trying to vent, which honestly, there's better ways to do it to kind of relax yourself and stuff. And, and there's a lot of stuff to kind of calm yourself down in ways, I guess, is when you're just like trying to like, cause like, okay, I'm kind of going off on a tangent, but basically what I'm trying to say is like, there are going to be time, bad times for everyone, bad days, bad moments. And it's all about kind of how you deal with it as a person. And it's like, because like the things you can do to make yourself better, it kind of determines who your character is. Like if you take your anger out on somebody, it's not really a great trait to have as a person. It's better to find a different outlet for that kind of stuff. Oh yeah. I mean, a lot of people like, Hey, you know, if you got VR, do beat saber. If you want to like, you know, do something to de-stress, it's like, Hey bro, go to a, 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 like a game world or something, play a game. And then when it stress is like, Hey, take a five, take a five minutes, just, you know, get off the game. Only five minutes, so it's not that long. Your mind's going to trick you to let you know it's not that long anyways. Yeah. Five minutes, deep breaths, walk. After five minutes, you usually are cleared up almost like 50 to 80% of your stress anger is going to be gone. Not oh, only yeah. gone, but now you're going to think more clearly with your mind. Have you ever had, like, anger, like, you know, anger issues or anything in the past? Because personally, I think I did because, like, I used to be, like, a very bossy kid that wanted things to always go his way and or the highway but over time i've learned that it's not really fun to force others to do something that they don't want to because i don't enjoy being forced to do something i don't want to and so um for anger issues i don't think i've really had too many because i've always had my own type of outlet yeah so it's more of talk to myself think about it myself kind of brood over it and then i've always been next day wake up it's a new day i'm always happy again almost 99 out of 10 times always like give me like i haven't told people i'm going through a really hard time it's gonna take either a day maybe two or three i will get over it because i always know the next day is better i don't try to bring the, the last day's issues into my next day for only things that ever maybe give me an anger issue is i don't know if it's technically even an anger issue it's just i call people out when i feel someone's trying to be manipulative or uh, you know trying to manipulate someone in front of me or they're trying to hide something or yeah, change the yeah, case yeah. and I just like yeah. point it out. That's why that's like, why I'll, I love honesty so much. Issue. Like I, honesty is something that I take very, very seriously because it's like I like I once like there was a time where when I was in middle school I lied to my parents all the time about homework and to the point where they no longer trusted me and they would not trust a single word that came out of my mouth. So they had to always confirm with my teachers if I was doing my homework or not. And it hurt. It really did hurt to lose their trust. And so it took forever to get it back. And it's made me hate lying in general. It's why I love being an honest person in an open book. And I try to answer just about every question. There's only like really one thing I try to hide in my life. And that's just something that kind of traumatized me in the past. Just that's like the try one thing I try to hide. But otherwise, I try to be open because I like people to know who I am what my thought process is, my beliefs and stuff. Except I do not talk, I don't talk about politics or stuff or religion because that is kind of can, you know, make people upset. Yeah, I mean, like, even when I stream, I don't talk about all the time and stuff, but off stream, yeah. if someone approaches me, I'll still talk about it. Yeah, yeah. Because also, I'm, like, oh, yeah, I'm, for, I'm for sure going to talk about it. Yeah. Also, uh, you made me think because you're saying, um, you're saying about how, uh, what was it? Um, like about how, um, give me one second, where you're like, uh, don't brood on the past. It makes me think of one of my favorite quotes from, it's from like Kung Fu Panda is the quote from like the the turtle guy. His quote is, um, what is it? It's, uh, yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, but, uh, but today is a gift. That is why it's called the present. And that's why I love that yeah, quote. Yeah, Master Uguay. It is, yeah, Master Uguay. It's such a good quote like it honestly i feel like that's one of the most impactful quotes i took in at heart is just don't brood on the past don't worry about what's to come enjoy life enjoy today enjoy this moment while you have it and live every moment to its fullest because you never know when there won't be another moment in your life you don't know because in this world you never know when everything when things will come to an end and that's why just 
enjoy yeah. yourself. Do what things you find fun, and you're gonna find. And even if you, even if there's stuff that's making you unhappy, stuff that's stressing you out, you can always find something to make you happy that can counteract that stress. As long as you look for it and you don't, oh, like you constantly think about, oh, I can't do anything, and make yourself think you're worthless and you can't, or you're powerless. Because the more you think you're powerless the more you are because you're making it true in your head. It's tricking yourself. Tell yourself, I can do this. I am strong. I can do whatever I put my mind to because nobody has any right to put you down and there's nothing in this world that deserves to put you down because you're your own person. You can achieve whatever you put your mind to. Yeah, I mean, I mean kind of like the same thing. Like my own kind of like different type of motto was uh, the past well, can be forgotten. The future is completely unknown the present is where you are truly live yeah. you don't live in the future or in the past anymore you live right this moment so do you want to keep brooding on the past and ruin your current life you have because five minutes later what if something happens like you know someone randomly tries to mug my house and has a gun and killed me yeah what am i gonna would, do that would suck have an angry so much life? or spread as much happiness where people would definitely be upset or sad that i'm gone Exactly. You don't carry your anger into you because it prevents you from making those new relationships of friends. Because mm. now, hey, here's a friendship that could happen. Oh, hey, get away. Uh, uh. Because yep. someone else pissed you off like two weeks ago because they called you a, they called you an idiot and you let him that, that word. That one person can control the rest of your future. Exactly. Yep. That's why for me it's like like because I once um, one of my biggest goals in life was and kind of still is. It's just it's it's harder for me now because it's hard for me to focus. But it's like, I want to be an author for so long. And so many people were like, oh, you want to be a best-selling author? Good luck. And I'm like, well, you know what? I don't care what you say. I'm going to try my hardest and maybe I'll succeed. If I don't, oh, well. But at least if I succeed, maybe at least I've proven to myself that you were incorrect. Like, I, I, for one, here's the thing. I love set, I love that saying of prove them wrong. At the same time, though, I hate it because I love the feeling of being like, okay, I've proven you wrong. But at the same time, it's also a really bad thing to think because it's like you're letting them think if like uh, like if you if you don't prove them wrong, then they've won. That's not a good thought to have. You don't want to give them the victory. Well, here's if you want my honest opinion, here's a full on opinion on that. Screw them. They didn't even try. Uh -huh. They're going to judge you because it was too much for them. They're not going to try. If you start taking out a book and start sketching notes, you're already taking the first step that most people don't take. Yeah. Very, very true. You're starting to take the first steps. They don't even try. They're just thinking, oh, here's the steps to get a proper end product. They're only thinking of now to end product. Uh -huh. And they're like, that's too much. It's like, you know what? How about this? Start smaller. Get yourself experience. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, well, you know, you get experience. You're always going to be better than the people that do nothing. You're already taking your first steps past the the starting line in a race. Yeah, for me, like especially like it, especially like the way I can really give an example is for me, it's it's so hard to focus on a task that I have to do it one step at a time, a lot of the time, and slowly work my way up to the finished product. Because if I only if I try to do it all at once, it just overwhelms me, and I can't focus on something. It's like I don't know where to start. I don't know where to start. And my, my clean my room is the greatest example because I used to be uh, my room used to be a pigsty. It used to be horrible toys and stuff oh, all over great. the floor. This was going well. Now we're talking about cleaning rooms. That's not going to go well because my room's not. My room's, kind of a little bit of a, a little my bit room's not the best, but at the same time, it's not horrible anymore. But um, but like it used to be oh, like yeah. so bad that my mom would have to give me. She'd have to come in the room and tell me clean pick up this toy, pick up that toy. She'd have to tell me one at a time what I'd have to pick up. And I've applied that to my life now. Is you, It's like if you have an obstacle or, or if you have an issue, pick it up one at a time. That way you can focus on the issue, find a solution. And if you can't find a solution, set it aside and for later because you can find, solve all the smaller issues right now. Like find all the small issues. That way you can deal with – like do this, fix the issues you're currently dealing with and then work on the harder issues. I uh, don't know if you can see my finger, but my headset crashed. I'll have to restart real quick. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hello. Welcome back. <laughs> oh, hello. hello. Thank hello. you very much. Sorry about that. Uh, I was actually looking into the VR chat thing real quick since I had to load in. Apparently yeah. they are having a lot of crashes. They're working on a fix again for yeah. older slash lower end CPUs. Yeah, there's a new update today too I had to install real quick too. I've just been talking to my chat. Yeah, I was supposed to fix the issues, but it hasn't changed much for me.
because, because like for me the the thing about these interviews I'm, I'm trying to change my pin real quick it's being a pain uh there we go the thing i love about these interviews is i love just being able to get a no uh get to know somebody on a very personal level like especially these streamers i look up to and stuff like i may have not heard of you but it's like you're still a really cool guy and i like i love interviewing people i, di I didn't expect to interview like even if I had only just met you, I'm like, hey, you want to? You ask me, hey, I've heard you do interviews, or I walk up to you, I'm like, hey, do you want to interview? Because it's it's just it's I love getting to know someone on a personal level because who knows, maybe a really good friendship could come of it, or like a really good bond of something like we come to really come and understand each other. Because it's like it's why I love these interviews. It's like I I feel like I got to know Happy, Maddie, and Miss Agent Fox, and now I'm getting to know you, which is really fun. Yeah, it's definitely nice but I get to know you too, and it was actually kind of a funny story how we even met. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which we're going to go on a different story, but I knew about you from someone else, and I friended you. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, um, trying to think about another good question to ask, because like, like what I do with these interviews, I especially love the, um, like the thing, my favorite part about doing these interviews is the whole, because it, like up until I interviewed Maddie Death, because I interviewed Miss Agent Fox, right? I interviewed her, and I was like, Okay, this is really fun. I like doing these back and forth interviews with us both asking questions. And then I and I brought the same thing up to Happy Stewart, and he kind and he kind of uh, and he was like, "Oh, I like him too," but not everyone's going to expect that when you say, "I want to interview you." They're going to be like, "Oh, hey, he's going to interview me." That means he's going to be the one asking all the questions. And and he said like, "Oh, no offense, some of the bigger streamers are not going to be like, oh, hey, I want to get to know you.' They're going to be like, "Oh, I'm just here to talk.'" And I'm like, "Yeah." But now, after, but after I interviewed Maddie Death, it kind of cemented in my head. I'm like, you know what? If even if the, the other these bigger streamers try to say, "Oh, I don't want to do a back and forth," I'll be like, "It's how I want to do my interviews. It's fun. The whole thing is, it's I call it an interview, but it's more I want to get to know you, and I want you to get to know me. It's kind of why what I want to do. It's fun. Oh yeah, of course. I mean, who want to do that? Yeah. I don't know. It's like it's it's something I've really come to enjoy, especially on VR chat. Is because like, a lot of the time, especially especially like this isn't for everyone, but this especially applies to streamers. Is a lot of the time they, if you want to talk to them, it's really hard because you're either gonna have to get them while they're off stream, or you're only gonna get a couple a couple minutes in with them before they move on to try and get some more content. But if you can, if you oh, can, yeah. but if you can ask them for that moment to sit down and get to know them and actually do it it's so fun because then you get to learn a more personal side of them and they get to learn a more personal side of you so you feel like you're actually connecting mm -hmm. yeah i don't know it's just a lot yeah. of fun well okay well then if we're going that route let me see uh what was the first thing what was uh your best thing your most favorite thing so far about vr chat regardless of streamers what's the most per the best thing you found best part not involving any streamers in that, VR chat. That is a very tough question because pretty much I've loved almost everything about VR chat except for a few things, but almost everything like I've loved doing the interviews because I love getting to know people. Like I've learned that I love it so much because I love to hear like I love to present what I do. like for instance, like when I talk about like mental health and trying to help during moments of stress, I love hearing about how other people deal with it and I love also providing ideas, especially. Like I just I love giving like give me advice to people kind of in a way whether that's viewers or other streamers and see what they think of that advice like and especially one of the things i always recommend in every interview is that one day i sat down and this is yes it might be because i you know i wanted to be an author but one day i sat down and i said you know what i'm going to write down a list of things that are you know things and beliefs about that i have or things that have affected me in my life, and I'm going to write about why this affected me, why this is my way of my thinking. Basically, a self-reflection on myself to see what made me who I am today. And I recommend that to everyone because it was so eye-opening to be like, "Oh, hey, this is me. This is who I am, and this is interesting to see this from almost an outside perspective of myself." Oh yeah, that's definitely a really good uh, response to that one. Yeah. It's just everything in this world is like, even outside of streamers, just, I really just love seeing browsing worlds. Sometimes you got okay worlds, you're like, eh, not so much. But then you get those really cool worlds you just randomly find. Oh, That's yeah. That's been like my favorite thing outside of the streamer thing. Seeing that, the different types of pronouns and people realizing some people are just like so much more relatable to you than you would expect. And they're like, oh, this guy's really chill to hang out with him. 
different people, different personality, and all like the worlds and the created things that they make, and yeah, all the stuff that people are coming out with, like Void Club created by somebody, Other Worlds created by somebody, Huggy Dungeon series created by somebody, yeah, it's and it's just so, amazing content. It's, it's all amazing. It's so unique in this game, and all the stuff people make, and just and yeah like wandering up into worlds there's so many cool stuff like there's worlds now with the new updates that you can actually fly and stuff which is really cool oh yeah when i get that thing fully implemented out there's gonna be plenty of worlds going around that are gonna be starting to use that stuff oh yeah all this like new upgrades yeah and i apologize if i talk a lot because i do that like it's just i love i guess like when i finally sit, uh, sit down one-on-one -on -one with somebody I, like my talkative side really comes out and i just i keep talking and talking and talking sometimes i don't know when to stop <laughs> oh definitely no talking talking too much is not a bad thing because you're not doing it wrong you're doing it in a good interactive way people still want to keep talking yeah Oh my gosh, yeah. No, it, yeah. it's fun. And for for you, like some of the people, like I'm curious about like meeting people in VR chat. Like to you, when you run into somebody and you finally sit down and get to know them, do you feel like you're getting to know like know them almost as much as you would if they were sitting in front of you in real life? It's actually hard to say because it's a. Uh... It's actually very hard to say because I know there's different people just like in the real world. There's just a smaller. Um quantity of people that you would meet at one point you see people that are outgoing and active the the uh, shy types the less talkative types that kind of just hanging around mm -hmm. the ones that are just like kind of not super outgoing but still talk and vr chat's the exact same way like i personally when i'm hanging around with a bunch of people i have so many people on my friends list i have over 1450 people on my friends list that's a lot to go through. Oh, wow. As soon as I go and jump other worlds, I see someone I haven't seen forever, but I see a yellow friend tag. I'll always, even just a quick, oh, hey, hello. I just want to say hello because you're you're here. You're one of my friends. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember how I met you, but, you, but we made a connection in the past. Even in for me, that can sometimes be super shy, and I almost can't do that. Just like, it's like, I don't know. Sometimes I'm so afraid to walk up to somebody and start a conversation because I don't know what, it, I, like, I, it's not even a, like a justifiable fear, in my opinion, because I just, I don't know what to say. I don't know if something I'll say will be either make them judge me or like, in, like think differently of me. I don't know. It's like some irrational fear I have that makes it hard for me to interact with people. <laughs> Well, I've actually been telling a lot of people that kind of too in a certain public worlds or other areas. Like I've actually gone out of my way more than half the time. Oh, there's someone over there kind of like not talking so much. I'm still trying to get to know most of the people in the world because there's people that I friend, they hang out with me because they're not so social, but so many people like hanging out with me because they say that I'm so easy to get able to talk to. I'm just like, well, yeah, I'm very outgoing and I understand that whole not talking to people thing. This game has actually kind of made me a lot more of an extrovert because I was kind of like a halfway introvert, extrovert, kind of like keeping myself, but not so much. But streaming and even just VR chat in general, I just feel like I'm making people happy. I want to do this more. I just talk to everybody and everyone's like, loves talking to me. I'm... Not everybody. 75% is about the average. Yeah. Some people still have that super antisocial, don't want to, don't care about you vibe. But some of the people I meet, I just make them all like feel better. They happy. They talk. They actually come and hang around me more. They actually feel like they're having someone that cared about them, and that's what really anybody wants right now. Oh, Everyone yeah. wants someone to at least feel like they care. So yeah, yeah, I've yeah. actually been doing that, and I make new friends, and I like, hey, we keep hanging out. It's perfect. I love it. Yeah, yeah. It's a really great experience for Yard Chat. It's so unique, and the the thing it allows us to do with this. With this, you know, platform, with this being able to come in here, and it's not just like you don't have to have VR to get to play VR chat and get to know people. I mean, sure, it kind of helps in a way, but you don't really need it. I mean, there's so many people in that like just playing desktop mode that are like, you know, like you can get to know and like really talk to. Yeah, I started off in in a desktop mode. I fell in love with it. Man, I got some crazy stories, actually, about that one. Uh, <laughs> pulling really long nights in the game. I mean, and even desktop. I was just, you know how it's all about some people have the drinking groups, drinking alcohol. Yeah. I had so much fun with some people I met that I literally got drunk in-game on desktop. This is before I streamed. 
And then I sobered up without falling asleep. And then the new group of friends later, after I sobered up, wanted to drink, so I got drunk again. Oh no! And I actually am very tame on my alcohol now. I'm yeah. very tame on my alcohol. I only like I don't like to get out of control, but I was so much on a VR chat high. That's what happened at, at the very beginning. Yeah. And now I still lightly drink. At most, I'll get tipsy. I'm like, I'm in control. I'm having a party, fun party time. I'm going to push this away. I, I like to be in control myself. Yeah. For me personally, I... Don't I, get addicted. <laughs> yeah. For me personally, I just don't like... I, I, I just don't want to drink. I like... I'm not 21 yet. Um, I will be next month, but I just... I don't have a... Des- well, actually, next month. Now I think about it. Actually, no, it's coming up. It's probably... It's seven days, I'm pretty sure. If I'm right about my date, April 15th. How did you go from one month to a week? Because I'm tired, and I, did, I don't think I got much sleep. <laughs> yeah, don't forget, it is April. I mean, with the, everything going on, even I forgot. I was like, oh, wait, it's already uh, this time in, of April? Yeah, yeah. Time by when you're always in VR. But yeah, I have my own personal reasons I, that I've decided to be a lifelong sober. I don't think there's anything wrong with people drink. It's just I, that's my personal choice. So... No, that's completely fine. That's completely fine. I think everyone should have their own choice to drink, but I don't think someone should be criticized either for drinking. Oh, exactly. Drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. As so- long as they're, you should only criticize them if it's like massively a problem. Yeah, yeah. Like blackout drunk every day, then it's like you got to get criticized, bro. Yeah, I, I've, that's I've when you ran them. into somebody who's who's actually kind of sad because they apparently said stuff while they're drunk, and um, they're kind of they're a bit sad because like their friends won't. Um, like sometimes don't, can't trust them when they're dr- because they don't know if they're drunk or sober because apparently they've said stuff before that wasn't really good for like especially it wasn't good for stream or streaming but at the same time i feel like it's kind of mean to say that to somebody be like i don't trust you because i don't know if you're drunk or sober it's like yeah if they're if they're i can understand it, it's kind of a problem but i mean i feel like that like it, it's there's ways to deal with it there's probably better ways than just tell a person hey i don't trust you um, there are different different ways. It's just everyone's got their own way. I'm yeah, usually more yeah. straight up to the point. Like I actually bring issues to people. I'll just say, "Hey, dude, right now I'm not, I don't kind of trust you so much when you're drunk because you reveal too much of yourself. You should really try to think of a way to, you know, get that under control." Yeah. Because if I'm having that issue, I'm still willing to work around that because I know you know you're a better person than when you are drunk. But mm-hmm. that's gonna affect how you how other people see you. You should really try to control that yourself or, you know, control your emotions while you're drunk because everyone's different. I actually, yeah. when I'm a sad, really sad and lonely drunk back then, I actually recovered better the next day because I'd always be like, you know what? Drinking in VR. Don't drink alone and sad. I'm like, no, I got my friends. So I drink alone and sad when I was having a really bad issue. I got headphones with everyone else. Woke up the next day. I'm like, everything's all right. I got my VR chat. I got friends. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. I just sense. have a higher viewpoint of life. Yeah, it's good to have that. It really is because, like, I don't know. I feel like this. It, it sometimes things can be interesting in this world. It really can. Like the way people deal with other people and when they have problems. Like for me, I personally, I've told you this like before, but like I hate confrontation. Like uh, you know, I've told you that like off stream, but it's like confrontation is something i hate with a passion i can't do it. it's one of the things that makes me the most uncomfortable in this world is confronting someone about an issue and it's like and i can't help it it, it literally will bring me so much anxiety i could have a panic attack and that's why it's like for me if i'm having an issue with someone my easiest my easiest way to deal with it for me is to just like get away from them and not talk to them and stay away from them or have to bring the issue up yeah. to someone else who can hopefully help me deal with it or talk to them in my stead just because I can't do it. I don't have the strength. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's like I don't like confrontation, but I kind of do jump into something when it's involving someone doing something wrong to a friend because I know, hey, people will usually feel like they're targeted. Someone's got to also stand them up. I'll be like, hey, I need to question you because... I'll be confrontational right now because you're kind of saying something a little bit over the top. I need to figure out what's going on and fix things. So I'm not confrontational. I'm more of the mediator. I try to like mediate and figure out what's going on. And then I make my own opinion based on that after I find out what's going on. Yeah. I don't have issues, but you always got to stand up for your friends because people are always like, oh, your friend didn't stand up for you. I'm like, sometimes they can't. Sometimes they really aren't acting like a friend should but everyone has their own version of a friend. 
I truly yeah. show my friendship by sticking up for somebody. If I believe something's going on or something's wrong. Yeah, yeah. So, um, for you, uh, what do you typically like? What do you? What do people really like? What are you kind of known for? Like by your friends or just in general? What do you think people know you by? Like, like your most defining quality, if I guess if that makes sense. My most defining quality, because I've had multiple things saying to me, but they said, I guess the most I've been kind of kind of head, which kind of generally is all around a great, amazing person. So like really like get charismatic, caring guy, pretty much. Very fun. They, this is actually what people have told me. So it's not me tooting my own horn here. Yeah. It's a, they said, oh, he's a very nice and caring person was one of the first ones. I'm really funny and humorous. I'm very outgoing and optimistic. And I just make everyone else feel happy and smile. 95% of the people is my actual number. 95% of people in VR chat actually know my name that I've known, that know my name. 95% that know who I am as a talking hound. Yeah. They actually love me. They think I'm cool. They think I'm a great guy and all that and chill. The 5% that hate me are the ones that are either an ex or... Because I tried to call him out on bullshit. Or yeah, someone yeah. else tried to like have an issue because of an ex at the same point, you know, that yeah. stuff. But people that's only five percent. You can't change that because people will have an opinion on you even if you're an amazing guy. People could either be jealous Oh yeah, there's there's gonna be those negative people or, out there who just they mm -hmm. won't like you no matter what you try to do. It's like they will like literally try to either beat you down or like something because it's like for some reason they just refuse to like you or and the, like they won't give you another chance or even if they do give you another chance they don't really I don't know like they're just some people you can't please in this world and all you really have to do is like just you either have to just not worry about them or if they're like really like kill them with kindness uh, it's like like if they're gonna be rude to you just be like hey man I'm sorry it's like I'm this is who I am. And if you don't like me for who I am, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's pretty much what I tell all the pe all other people, too, saying you can't please everyone. All you got to do is move on and be the same person you are because people will still like that. Yeah. Yeah. They uh, I let those bad people, like, like the kind of the same thing. I'm still making more friends because I'm the same personality or even a little bit better than the person in the past. But if yeah. I let those bad people affect me, I could have, like, stopped so many friendships from not happening. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes yeah, sense. Don't let, don't let them salt you up too much where you turn salt to yourself. Yep. Very true. Very true. Uh. Yeah. So let's see. Let's see. For a question for you is. Dang, I had the question, but it slipped my mind. Let's <laughs> see. Because I'm trying to make it not too relatable to the last question I asked. Because your favorite thing in VR chat so far, but. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see. What, what what would be considered your biggest hobby? Like uh, your biggest pastime outside of VR. Outside of VR, that's uh I'd say it's either going to be probably either watching YouTube, like what well, just really I guess entertainment. Just trying to get like do stuff that makes like like that I enjoy like either well that's reading a book, whether that's uh like um watching a tv show watching an anime or watching youtube uh like or or twitch stuff like that it's just really like like kind of escaping and just like trying to like find something that i like to watch and enjoy but and then also writing is a big thing that i like too All righty. Well, what kind of your topics you write like a little mystery stuff like random thoughts create What's, what kind of, like, topics do you write about? Kind of a bit of everything, honest. It's like, but my favorite topics are kind of like, I love fantasy, romance, and I, I kind of like mystery, too. I still think I'd be good at writing that. I really don't. Um, but, uh, yeah, um, it's like, especially for me, romance is one of my favorite things to, like, write or just, like, watch or anything. Just because I just, it's such a great emotion to, like, absorb is, like, love and stuff. It's just a very great positive emotion to absorb to see two people who are genuinely care about each other in such a strong way. Yeah, I can understand that. It's, it's kind of the same thing. It's like, you know, friendships, relationships, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. 
it's I'm a little bit of a hopeless romantic at times. Like I like the cute little adorable stuff. It's just it's just like seeing the person how much they care. Even the tiniest things you'll you'll notice. Yeah. Very, very true. Yes. I can agree with that hundred percent of the way. Huh. Yeah, it's definitely one of the best things. Kind of like you get someone that sends you a little card, and then you're not complaining or anything. You're just like, oh, you made you think about drawing a heart with a crayon on paper for me, even though you're we're both thirty. Uh, yeah, <laughs> years old, still using crayons. Uh, uh, that's... See, that sounds adorable and cute, right? A little romantic, just a <laughs> little random thing now and then. Yeah, yeah. Uh, very, very true. Very true. Uh I feel like we've talked a lot in this in this interview. Like we've been going for I think about an hour now, so I think we've been doing pretty good. Um, I don't know if you want to end about here. About forty five ish. Forty five ish. Don't know if you want to keep going. If you have more that uh, we should talk about and stuff. Hmm. Well, I don't know if there's too much to talk about because we already got the, like the main key points in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Very. Very true. I, I agree with that there. And we also did talk a lot yeah. before the interview too. So. <laughs> Yeah, we did. I mean, the person is the interviewer. If they run out of questions, because I was already starting to run out of questions, because we were already talking kind of naturally in our conversation, basically what our next questions were anyways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very true. That is very true. Yeah, and that's definitely Plus, what we're I... both kind of tired. Yeah. So it's hard to think of all the new questions. Yeah, yeah. So but I do think that it's been a good interview, though. I do think it's been good. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think it's been great. All right. Well, I think that uh, this would be a good place to kind of uh, end the interview then, probably. Let me just uh, go back in the, here. Let me just try and fix my camera real quick. <laughs> here we go. But, yeah, I think that it's been a very good interview with you, and I am very thankful that you decided to uh, agree to it. <laughs> well, of course. Uh, I was only interviewed one other time, but, you know, I'm always interested in seeing that and seeing how the person's going to interview me because – I've interviewed only one other person that was official say on, so I know that, that interview's been. So it's actually a very interesting opportunity as Grant as yeah. offered. Yeah, what you th- what you think about this interview? In my opinion, like, do you think it was a pretty good one? I actually really enjoyed it. Yeah, I was actually really intrigued by all the questions, the way you were talking, the way you had the cameras moving around and everything. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Very this is my first time, time actually yeah. controlling the cameras, almost like a broadcast. I've never tried this, so that's why this this interview is gonna be a lot different, I think, than my last interview. I'm gonna have to fix the camera real quick yeah because i don't know before i was like now that i've learned from maddie death uh and happy steward about kind of how to control a camera it's been a lot more fun uh to do this and i'm making a weird face i've realized <laughs> my avatar does that <laughs> now how are you doing that with the camera though is that like a specific setting on her so okay so um on the camera there's this uh the pins are how you can change between cameras so what you can do is this uh this orange button um allows you to change kind of how the camera moves um, so it's like, if you put on this, like, tilted landscape, it kind of moves the camera smoother, and it will, like, if you swap to a different camera, it will actually, like, uh, I don't know, it zooms in a lot quicker. Like, if you pin something to a world, like, here, like, it's hard to explain, but basically, um, how Maddie that taught me, this is a really cool trick, so if you put your camera, like, right here, uh, if you open a pin, you have a pin up, it's your first pin, um, you, you go ahead, you set this so that way it is, you're facing towards you, you set it to the world for the, on the yellow, like the little globe. And then you're going to let it, and then you're going to, um, go like this. So this is a really cool trick I was taught. So once you put the, put the globe on, I am falling down oh, the stairs. That's what the pins were for. Yeah, they let you switch between them. But the coolest thing is if you put, like, if you put your world, like if you put what, this, this is, it only works with one pin. Um, but if, like, at least from what I've found, is you put a pin, you go to the world, you put the, the slanted landscape, and then if you back away and you leave the camera there, whoops, I fell off, but, I mean, that will work regardless. If you actually come down here, um, once you set your pin up and you have it on the world and the tilted landscape, now you're just going to tap the world once. Um, you're going to go up to that little yellow, and you're going to tap that once. And your camera zooms in on you. No, oh, that's cool. That's really cool, and that's how you're. And that's why it's like I kind of um, when I'm streaming, uh, rather than do what a lot of streamers do, like they like to take their cameras, um, like they'll have their viewport on the front of their face, and they'll have like this little thing on the bottom right corner of themselves using the green screen, which is apparently broken right now. But um, 
they'll do that. But uh, what I like to do is kind of like what Maddie Death does, where he just kind of either carries the camera around, he just he plays around with the camera because it's a lot more cinematic, and it also get, it's a lot easier to get really cool thumbnails for someone who doesn't do use Photoshop. So, oh, that, that's actually very cool. Like, I mean, I've never realized that. Like, I was always thinking about like when I do little camera things, like. I work around with the camera a little bit. Someone thought I actually, when I did the uh, Purge roleplay thing, they're like, oh, dude, you're really good at editing. And like, literally, I just did this. Yeah, yeah. I was like, literally held the camera like this. Like, okay, go. I'm just going to hold this like this. Hey, yeah. So if someone runs past me faster, it already has a cool cinematic effect. So I I learned little tricks like that. But I never once was like, what the hell are these pens for? I don't even give a crap. I'm yeah, not going to use them. Three pins, like, like, they can oh. change between them. Like, they can be like, here's a camera point facing this direction, a camera facing this, facing this direction. I'm still trying to figure out all the tricks. Like, I really wish there's a way just to have a camera facing behind my head, but it's kind of hard to get it to stay there if you move around a lot. Like, it will mess up. You'll have to readjust it, and it just takes a lot of time. So, I kind of, when I'm doing interviews, I set up my cameras beforehand, but when I'm like moving around, I kind of, I leave it on facing me, but I have it on the tilted landscape and the yellow just camera lens, because then it just, it's smoothly, it moves smooth, and it looks really nice and cinematic and stuff. It's really cool. Oh, that's awesome, though. So that's cool. I learned a new trick, though. Yeah, passing on what I was just taught by Matty Death. He was a really nice guy who taught me some cool tricks and stuff with the camera. That zoom trick is one of my personal favorites now. It's just that I don't really have much of a use for it all the time. Like, I feel like eventually, once I come up with a good way to use it, I will. It's just right now, I'm so new to streaming. I'm so new to VR chat. I'm not sure what exactly my shtick is yet. <laughs> well, you'll, you'll find your own personality. Don't compare. I'm going to let you know in the future. Just don't compare yourself to other people's greatness and everything. Yeah. There's different types of uh, TV, TV actors and everything for a reason. Uniqueness. Yep, yep, very true. Everyone has their own unique little talent to them. And that's why, I don't know, I like these interviews. They're one-on-one, -on -one, get to know each other, and also kind of like give advice to people. Maybe people will take uh, hear something we say and be like, I'm going to apply this to my life, and maybe it'll help me. It's something I kind of like the idea of. Oh, yeah, definitely. Ugh. Well, thank you very much much for the interview i do have to head to an rp i still got to go to all right no problem thank you for coming out though and i hope to see no you worries thanks for having me man yeah no problem see ya of course man take it easy you have a yeah. good day yeah I, i'd peace but yeah, I'm I'm around with you too. <laughs> yeah i'll definitely i hope to see you around more <laughs> i don't know i need to get yeah, I, I also really want a personal avatar i really want to get one but i just don't know who to talk to about it <laughs> Well, I mean, this one was made complete from scratch with Mesh. It was a two hundred dollars. He gave me like a twenty dollars discount because I was constantly talking to him. He got it done in like three or four days, I think. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, but I designed it. Oh yeah, that's so cool. It's a really good avatar. It's really yeah. unique too. It's almost it's kind of like Mega Man, but it's also kind of like Tron. It's almost like a mixture between the two. Yeah, it's a D DJ version of Mega Man Zero. Okay. I don't really know much about the Mega Man series. It's one of the few series I didn't play, so. Yeah, just if you ever look up Mega Man Zero, it's a regular Mega Man Zero character, but I just added it, this one to have it so it's a completely unique character and not copyrighted, so I can do whatever I want. Yeah, yeah. And if everyone says, oh, also the good thing is I'm so well known in VR chat now, anyone takes this avatar, rips it, and steals it, and tries to use it, it's like, that's how Taku Hound, what the hell are you doing with that? Yeah, yeah, because you have your name stamped on it too, and you're so well known with that, with like that avatar is just recognizable. <laughs> exactly, it's so unique. Literally, people have been going through the HGS Huggy Dungeon Series three map, and they said my avatar stands out so much compared yeah. to everyone else. Like you can have different like avatar and echo, slightly different version, slightly different version of these ones, and then this one. Yeah, and then there's other ones. Once they have a certain uniqueness, people recognize it because it's not. Almost like a cookie cut paste. Yeah. I actually plan to do the yeah. Huggies Dungeon for like 500 followers. So I plan to do that. It, although I hate it because I'm not great at horror. I hate horror so much. I hate being scared. But oh, you're definitely going to get freaked out. Because there's a certain played, things like, that first, freak me like, out quite a bit. I played like the first like couple like areas. And immediately just everyone in the room like, I was playing with was like, I don't want to play anymore. We're, 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 like this is uncomfortable. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm kind of feeling the same way. But for 500 followers, I'm gonna do it just uh, because I feel like that'll be a good, a good, uh, a good milestone. And then for a thousand follow, well, I say a thousand followers, but I'm more aiming for once if I if I reach Twitch partnership, my goal is to do Alien Isolation VR, which I'm gonna hate. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is going to terrify me. I've also heard it's very buggy or kind of breaks, so we'll see about that. I, but whatever I'll I do, check it out I'm not playing too. it. I'm playing it on the easiest difficulty. That's for sure. Oh, <laughs> uh, what are those people? Not even the normal mode. <laughs> not when I'm in VR. Are you kidding me? It's a horror map, and I hate horror. Oh my god! I mean, some people are like, "I'll play the story, but I'm gonna go normal mode." And there's always like, "Oh, I beat the game mode. What mode? Super easy, <laughs> boy." Yeah, no, I depend. Like, I used to play on easy, but now I really do like playing on hardest difficulty on games. It's just with if I'm gonna with horror games, since I hate it so much, and I know I'm gonna be cowering in a corner for about an hour, I'm going to play on easy so I'm not just dying constantly from being afraid. Oh, definitely. Well, they're definitely have a good time on HGS though. Yeah, that's what I, I hope so. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going to be heading off to my RP now, man. You take it easy.